So by now we've seen that we can manipulate pointers directly using pointer arithmetic. And when I started down this road, I said that this has something to do with the relationship between pointers and arrays. And ultimately, what I was hoping to do is to eventually get to the bottom of why it is I draw my arrays so strangely on my diagram. And the answer, we finally are ready to see this, the answer is that arrays are pointers. It's true that when you create an array, the compiler does a little bit more work than when it creates just a pointer. But after you create an array, the name of the array behaves exactly as if it were just a pointer to the first element. So here I have an array called A. It's got three elements. We know that because it's determined by the size uh, of the initializer. And uh, it's created on line 10. It's a variable, it's scoped. The variable A and all of the accompanying storage gets destroyed when the scope containing it ends. Um, but after I actually create this array, the name A, if I ever use it, behaves exactly as what I've drawn on my diagram, just an arrow pointing at that first element. That's one of the reasons why uh, you can't get the size of an array easily, because every time you use the name of the array, all you're really talking about is this arrow. Now, I've drawn the array in my diagram using the strange notation where I don't put a box above the letter A, and that's to indicate that A is actually, if I use it in my code, it actually is just a pointer to this element here. But unlike a typical pointer, like this one, P, A can't be modified. So P can be modified to point at anything. It's a variable, I can modify its value. A is only really special in one way compared to other pointers, which is that it is locked to always point to this thing. But if I ever use the name A, I'm just using this pointer. It's got type int star, it points to element zero. So uh, I've got some code here, let's try running it just before we do anything else. It prints out value of star p is 6, value of star q is 2.4. Okay, great. So we've used this notation, which I should add is actually my preference. So we'll see an alternate way of writing it in a minute. But actually, in my own code, I always write it this way. I think this is more readable. It makes it clear to people reading it that what I'm doing is making an arrow pointing at a sub 1. On the other hand, I don't have to do that. It turns out that the name A is just this arrow. And if I want an arrow pointing at A sub 1, well, what I want to do really is start here and then move ahead by one step. So what I could do is I could say in star P equals A plus 1. Because A, the name A, behaves just like a pointer to the first element of the array. So now P contains an arrow pointing at A sub 1, this, just like what I had before, but without the use of the square brackets. And then uh, Q would be B plus 2. And we've seen enough now that we're actually finally ready to understand why is it that arrays are indexed starting at zero. I mentioned before, that's a really confusing point for people at the beginning, but there is a reason for it. And the answer is because arrays are pointers. Whenever I use square brackets or indeed this form of arithmetic, what I'm really saying when I use a notation like a sub zero is I'm saying, go to the location uh, pointed to by a and then move ahead by this number of steps. So if I want a sub one, I follow the arrow and then move ahead by one step, a sub one. But that means if I follow the arrow and I just stay where I am, which is the first element, I'm moving ahead by zero steps. So really this number in the square brackets is actually just the relative distance you're traveling, not unlike what you would do with pointer arithmetic. And that's why indexing starts at zero. So we'll go back to this representation here. The name of an array, after I create the array, the name of the array behaves exactly the same as a pointer to the first element of the array. That means it can be used in every expression where you would need a value of type int star in the case of A or float star in the case of B. But we'll run this version before we go any further. All right, so it still works, same result. But there's a natural question to ask there, which is, okay, great. So apparently, even though pointer arithmetic is sort of horrifying, we can use pointer arithmetic on A and B, the names of these arrays. But shouldn't we ask the opposite question? Up until this point, we were always using square brackets. We thought square brackets are some specialized array thing. But I just said that the name A behaves exactly the same as a pointer. So wait a minute, does that mean I can attach the, whoops, does that mean that I can attach square brackets to any pointer I want? 
And the answer is, in fact, yes. The square bracket notation subscripting is actually a pointer operation, not an array operation. It's actually just syntactic sugar on uh, the use of pointer arithmetic. So I'm going to go back to this. So uh, a plus 1. And let's try subscripting one of our pointers. So uh, let's see. I'm going to say value of p sub 1 is... And then I try subscripting my value, my pointer, p. So we'll start with that. And sure enough, p sub 1. So follow the arrow from p and walk ahead by one step. That's 10. And if I were to ask what is p sub 0, what I'm really saying is follow the arrow and walk ahead by 0 steps. And so I should just end up at 6. In fact, p sub 0 is, in fact, syntactic sugar. When I write p sub 0, what I'm really writing, this is exactly equivalent to just writing star p. And you can try that on an array as well. If I write a sub 0, I can also write, in, in any context I could write a sub 0, I could also just write star a. Um, and uh, I would argue that it's still probably a better idea to use uh, to use the subscript notation because it's clearer. It makes it clear to people reading your code what you're really trying to do. Pointer arithmetic can be helpful, but often there are people that use pointer arithmetic that appear to only want to confuse people reading their code. That's not a nice thing to do. We live in a society. It's better to write code that people can read that doesn't deliberately frustrate them. You'll find it's hard to make friends that way. Um, so value of p sub 1 would be the subscript notation is really saying follow the arrow and move ahead by one step. And it turns out, so I'll, I'll write that. We'll have to see an example of that working for q. So what's q sub 1? Well, if I follow the arrow from q and move ahead by one step, I'm looking at a float, so I have to make sure I change that to percent 0.1f. Uh, and then there's q sub 1. All right, so we'll try running that. And there it is. It's the value 5.5. And I should add that because I can do pointer arithmetic with both addition and subtraction, it is completely valid for me to ask a question like, what is q sub negative 1? Because if we think of the equivalent in pointer arithmetic, q minus 1, that's valid. So I follow the arrow q, and I walk backwards by one step. Now, again, negative indexing is probably not the best idea in general. It's not a good habit to get into, but it is syntactically valid. And the punchline is it turns out that subscripting is actually just syntactic sugar. That's it. This whole square bracket notation that we've been using on arrays is just syntactic sugar. And I can demonstrate that because I can show you what it's syntactic sugar for. So if I want to say q sub 1, what I'm really saying is get me an arrow that points at something. Um, I have the arrow q. Move ahead by one step. Get me an arrow that points at this and then follow that arrow. So I could actually use pointer arithmetic for that. I could say, okay, first get me an arrow that points 1 to the right of where q points. So q plus 1 and then follow that arrow. And here I'm saying get me an arrow that points 1 to the left of q. So that would be q minus 1 and then follow that arrow. <laughs> Note the order of operations here. So I first create an arrow pointing at the next thing over, and then I follow it. And it turns out that this is verbatim identical to what subscripting does. Whenever the compiler sees a subscript operation, it generates one of these. That's it. It is syntactic sugar. I think it's one of the more productive forms of syntactic sugar because this is a real nightmare. Um, this is the kind of thing that uh, is very hard to read. All the stars obviously put you on edge because you know that star means pointers are involved, and pointers can be scary sometimes. Um, and so, here's an, so here we are, we can see q sub 1 is still 5.5, even if I use pointer arithmetic, and q minus 1 uh, is still uh, 3.1. But let's go one step further. So I just, I mentioned a minute ago that subscripting in general is um, syntactic sugar, which means I should be able to do anything uh, that I can do with subscripting without subscripting. So let's try indexing a. I guess I don't want to index, uh, let's, let's do b, not a. So I want to index A twice, or B twice. B sub 1, B sub 3. But I'm not going to use subscripting. Instead, I'm going to use the name B as what it really is, which is a pointer. I'm going to say I want to take the arrow that I get to the first element of B, add 1 to it to position it at uh, index 1, and then follow the arrow. So B plus 1, and then take that and dereference it with a star. Here I want B plus 3. So I'm using pointer arithmetic instead of subscripting. We will notice that it is completely valid. 
And then one last thing to think about at the end here. If it turns out, this is a thought experiment. Don't do this. It's not going to help anything. Um, this is a thought experiment, though. Let's uh, create a variable i for the sake of knowing the types of everything we're working with. Int i equals 1. OK, so I'm going to say this. Uh, value of a sub i is, and then I'm going to print out the result of subscripting a with i. So we know already, of course, this is going to be a sub 1, which will be the value 6. Now, because we're at a point in the course where it's natural to be a little bit superstitious, there it is. The value of a uh, sub i is 6. What I want to do is uh, meditate a bit on what it means for subscripting to actually be syntactic sugar. So what I said a minute ago was every time the compiler sees this, before it goes any further, it actually turns it into this situation. It turns it into star a plus i. And maybe there's that natural question. Wait a minute. a plus i, well, that's no different than i plus a, is it? I mean, obviously, we know addition is commutative. It works in both directions. 5 plus 6 equals 6 plus 5. So of course, I know already that I could write uh, star a plus i. I could use pointer arithmetic instead of my subscripting because the subscripting is equivalent to pointer arithmetic. So I'll actually write that in this time. OK, so the value of uh, star of a plus i is whatever. So we'll try printing that out. We'll make sure we're, st we're still on the same page here. OK, still 6. And then I ask the question, well, wait a minute. a plus i is the same as i plus a, isn't it? I mean, that seems about that seems reasonable to me. So there we go. So i plus a. Obviously, I could add in reverse order, add 1 to the pointer a, and then dereference that. I'm allowed to perform the operations in whatever order I want. But then you should ask yourself the question, well, wait a minute. If star something plus something is equal to first thing subscript second thing, doesn't that mean that i plus a all dereference, so i plus a in brackets with a star, doesn't that mean that that should logically be equivalent? If the compiler really does what I'm saying it does, which is every time it sees this, it turns it into this, that means that when it sees something like this, isn't that equivalent to i sub a? Well, there's no better way to find that out than to try it. So the value of i sub a. Ooh. I sub a. And it works. And there it is. And so hope, don't do this. Do not do this. Oh man, this would be annoying. So uh, this is just going to confuse people. But the reason I wanted to bring it up was first, you deserve the truth. And second, it's really important to understand that subscripting is basically an illusion. It's notation that helps us understand arrays. And, and boy, do I think it helps. But really, deep down, all C does when you allocate an array is it gives you a chunk of storage and it gives you a pointer to it. And all of the operations that we have been doing that involve arrays have secretly just been pointer operations all along. And that includes subscripting. Subscripting is a very thinly veiled version of pointer arithmetic, right down to the point where we can do completely irrational looking things because the compiler doesn't give it a second thought. The compiler sees our subscript operation and turns it into pointer arithmetic. And of course, we know this is completely valid just like this is.